Hey guys, Hunter Trophy Hunter here, back with another Fall of Porcupine video. I'm not sure if we're going to get the trophy right now for Irma, listening to all of her stories. But if we do, you just have to talk to her like every day. And we got a candle for her at the Harvest Festival, so let's go. There she is. Hey Irma, how are you doing? Finley, what are you doing here? I thought you were out celebrating today. I was, it was great. I met a lot of people and the stew contest was really exciting. They got the fountain working again for the occasion. And look what I found, Irma. Oh, we literally even said it for. Can you smell that, Doctor? The scent is just incredible. You've really made my day. <laughs> I'm feeling much less shivery already. This brings back so many images for me. So many memories from years gone by. From all the many hibernation festivals I've seen. It was your first one today, wasn't it? Yes. Well, you should get some rest, Irma. All that talking gets to your lungs. No, it's all right. I need someone I can... spin my yarns to. I'm very tired. <clears throat> But I would like to tell you one last story. Irma? What do you mean by that? It's okay. What? No, it's not okay at all. We'll get you back on your feet, I promise. I'll get Dr. Kowalski right away. We'll figure it out. You've already done more than I can imagine. But may I ask one more favor of you? Of course, what is it? I'd love another cup of tea. My throat's a little dry, you know. Of course, I we definitely don't fuss. It's all right. I'll just dash to the break room. We have tea there. I'll be right back. A cup of tea would be just a thing. Okay, let's go get her some tea. Gotta get her some tea. Gotta get her tea. Gotta get her some tea. Run, run. I wish we could, like, be more frantic about it and just, like, throw shit everywhere that fire extinguisher just start letting it off spill that trash can kick that thing over oh my god that'd be so great knock that thing over jump on these chairs i need tea we always have hot water here thank goodness what kind of tea should i make black tea peppermint tea fruit tea green tea winter tea green tea okay now i better get this straight to her now. Finley, taking a break already no i I'm just getting a cup of tea for a patient. Ah, uh, yes, well, Irma has been a taste of the finer things. Could you come with me, please? Irma isn't doing well at all. I know. I already went to see her and checked her readings. She's going to die in the next few hours. But we have to do something. What I'm going to do is make myself a cup of tea, too. How can you just walk in there like nothing's wrong? Why aren't you doing anything? I've already done everything I could. Sometimes even the best treatment in the world can't help Finley. But, go to her. Make her last hours as comfortable as possible. That is our duty to her now. Make sure she has enough painkillers. Shouldn't we contact her son? I have already tried that too. Unfortunately, I have not yet been able to reach Gunyaleo. <laughs> I'll keep trying to inform him of the situation. Go now. Irma's tea is getting cold. Oh, what if I got her the worst flavor? Oh, I'm going to feel like such a jerk. Why aren't you running? <clears throat> Irma, I'm back. And I've got your tea. Irma? Hmm? Who? Oh, sorry, I must have dozed off for a minute there. Yuri, darling, thank you so much. Just set it down there. I remember my first hibernation festival like it was yesterday. It was already very cold for the time of year. The cars and park benches were buried in snow. But the hibernation festival still had to go on, of course. Gilbert. 
loved hot air balloons more than anything else in the world, but he also had a great fear of flying, and he wasn't the youngest anymore either, neither of us were. So we compromised by heading into the court side to watch the balloon race. At least we used to until it was banned. It was the hibernation festival. When Gilbert sat in the hot air balloons for the first time, there was already snow on the roof, roads and the roofs of the houses. The lights, the smells, we were there every year. When it was cold outside and everyone started to come closer together, I'd already bought a hazelnut candle and enjoyed some lovely conversations with plenty of laughter. When Gilbert secretly slipped away, he spotted a hot air balloon in the square. Back then you could still book flights in the winter. They said you could see the whole town from up there. But that year, the balloon remained grounded. The weather has already barely cold and very windy. Then all of a sudden, an icy gust of wind blew across the square. Hats and caps flew through the air. Mothers had to hold on to their children. And that gust of wind blew my Gilbert right into the basket of the balloon. When he picked himself up to climb back out again, he got the fright of his life. The balloon had broken loose and was already rising hundreds of feet above the town. And me? I seen the whole thing and I let desperately at a dangling rope to try and hold the balloon down. But instead I simply floated away with it. Gilbert helped me into the basket and the wind carried us higher and higher into the wintry clouds. Porcupine was no more than a speck of light and the fog eventually disappeared altogether. Gilbert could barely move due to his fear of heights. The cold bit into our skin. But a man should cheer him up. His dream had finally come true. I reminded him riding in a hot air balloon. Unfortunately, we soon realized that the burner was frozen. But then I remember the hazelnut candle I bought. So Gilbert and I made ourselves comfortable with the basket of the balloon and lit the candle to keep warm. I don't know how long we sat there, but it was indescribably beautiful. Just us, the sky and the clouds, and the scent of the hazelnut candle. Suddenly there was a bang, the burner had started up again. The heat from the hazelnut candle had thawed it out. Gilbert quickly figured out how to steer the balloon. Even with the altitude, it didn't bother him anymore. But how would we know which way to go? Then, before we could even begin to worry again, I heard it, very softly. The Hibernation Hymn. The song everyone in Porcupine sings together for the Hibernation Festival. We stared our ears, we strained our ears, and Gilbert steered toward the balloon, straight toward the song. Eventually, Porcupine emerged from the fog. The beautiful decorated marketplace, the snow-covered roofs, and the festival goers, what a sight. They had broken into song to help us find our way back. Gilbert landed right in front of the fountain, all the crowd cheered. And that's the story, more or less, of how Gilbert and I took flight together for the first and last time. He died the following year. I'll be reunited with him soon. Then we'll fly together again, my Gilbert and I. Maybe I'm not quite sure. I think I can hear it just faintly. Yes, there's probably still celebrating and there's two of us struck working the night hospital to shift, huh? They're doing a good job with the work. Bye bye. Irma? I made it to the to the hibernation.